sequential data can be represented implicitly using an iterator. Iterators are a common interface in many programming languages, and they're used in Python as a way to access the elements of lots of different containers. A container can provide an iterator, which in turn provides access to its elements in some order. The built-in functions iter and next create and advance iterators, respectively. So iter takes anything iterable, which could be a container or something you create yourself, and it returns an iterator over the elements of an iterable value. Next is a built-in function that returns the next element in an iterator. Let's say I have a container, a list containing 3, 4, and 5. If I call iter on that list s, I get an iterator t. That iterator knows the contents of the list, and it also has a marker for what's next. So you can think of an iterator as a position in some sequence. It gives you access to the element at that position and everything after it. If I call next on t, I'd get the number 3. As a consequence of calling next, the marker here is going to advance, which means the next time I call next, I'll get 4 instead of 3. And since I've called next twice, I've advanced twice, and now the marker is set to 5. If I create a second iterator for the same container, that means I have a second marker into the same list. So u is an iterator that hasn't been advanced at all. If I call next on u, I'll get the number 3. Now t doesn't forget where it was just because I created u. So if I ask what's next in t, I'll get the number 5, and the iterator will advance past the last element, saying that it's at the end of this list. It's still the case that I can ask for elements in u, so if I ask what's the next thing in u, it'll say 4. So t and u are iterating over the same values, but they're otherwise independent in the position that they're going to give you next. Iterators are always ordered, even if the container that produced them is not. So for example, we can have a container of dictionary keys, each key bound to a value. So here I have a dictionary of English words 1, 2, and 3, bound to the numbers 1, 2, and 3. If I get an iter of d, I end up with an iterator over the keys. Now I'm going to get those keys in some arbitrary order. So if I say next k, I might get 1, and then next k again, I might get 3, even though I entered them in this order. I have no guarantee that they'll come out that way. But as you can see, eventually I'm going to get all of the keys. So that's one important property of iterators. The other one is that keys and values are iterated over in an arbitrary order, which is non-random, and varies across Python implementations, so don't trust it. It depends on the dictionary's history of insertions and deletions, so two dictionaries with the same contents might have a different order. However, if keys, values, and items are iterated over with no intervening modifications to the dictionary, the order of items will directly correspond. What does that mean? That means since I got the keys in the order 1, 3, 2, if I got the keys in another iterator, I'd still get the order 1, 3, 2. And in fact, if I got the values of the dictionary d, the iteration order would be the same as the order of the keys. So I'd get the number 1, the number 3, and the number 2. So for a dictionary that hasn't been modified, you can iterate over the elements in some fixed order. You just don't know anything about what that order might be in advance. Okay, let's build ourselves a list that's slightly more complicated than the one you saw before. This one's a nested list. If I ask for the next value in a list, I get an error. That's not what next does. Next first expects you to have created an iterator over the contents of some container at which point then I can ask for the next value of t, which will give me the sublist 1, 2. So all it does is give me the element at index 0 of the list that I'm iterating over. And if I ask for the next t again, I'll get a different value. If you ever want all the values in an iterator, 
you can just list them out. Now here, you see that we only get the values that are left. We already used up the list one, two, and the number three. So when I build a list of the remaining contents in an iterator, I just get the numbers four and five. Now if I ask for the next element in t at this point, I get an error, a special kind of error called stop iteration. So that exception is something that I could handle if I wanted to in order to make sure that I never go past the end of an iterator. And that's how you tell you're at the end, is that Python will raise a stop iteration exception. For a dictionary, just like the fact that I can see an arbitrary order when I print out a dictionary, it might be the case that I'll get an arbitrary order for the keys when I iterate through. So if I ask for the next k, I'll get three, and I'll get two after that. Notice that this is in the same order as it was displayed. And that's not a coincidence for a dictionary that isn't modified. If I keep iterating through it, I'm gonna see the same order over and over again. I just don't know what that order is in advance. So if I ask for an iterator over the values, I should see the number three and then the number two. Now be careful if at some point I modify the dictionary. For instance, by popping off the value bound to the key two. Now the dictionary is changed and I'm no longer allowed to ask for the next V because this V was an iterator created with a version of this dictionary before it was changed. So it's an error to keep iterating even though the dictionary changed size during iteration.